let's let's dig deeper into the contract catering specifically because yeah. I feel like it's almost like we've dug we've dug past the oil and we've entered a fucking brand new world. Like we've almost got into Atlantis, like the water world, and it's like <laughs> so perplexing and confusing. And the way I've always heard about it, or it, it, to me, it's always perplexed me. It's like I feel like you can end up being a busy fool in that because yeah. the amount of effort to get a, to get a, to get a Spotify listing and there's bugger all volume there, which you could just spend. I don't know, you could spend that energy building D2C where there is volume or you could spend that energy going into trying to get a, a, a co-op listing with as 500 yeah. stores. Yeah. Um, but then at the same time, as soon as you get into that that Atlantis underworld of uh, out of home, is mm-hmm. there are these huge opportunities in like, uh, I don't know, for example, if you're a functional drinks brand and David Lloyd, that's suddenly yeah. 80 sites. But where it gets confusing is it, it, it could, not saying it would, but it could take, and maybe David Lloyd's a bad example because I know they change the menu very infrequently, infre- but yeah. it could take as much effort to get a single site like a Spotify, which is great for, for shouting about on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. um, as it would a David Lloyd, as it would a, a school which isn't great for LinkedIn. Imagine saying, oh, I got into loads of primary schools. I mean, that's hardly going to, you know, hardly bang the bong for that. Yeah. Um, imagine, let's make this really dumb, right? So, so, so you get the contract catering listing, like yeah. what are the first one or two you go for? Because I know Compass is really hard. Like, again, let's just say this is Popey's Pops. Who am I going for? First question. Second question, I get a listing. What are the first three things I do? Like I'm sat there going, fuck, I know I've got this listing. What do I do? So... So, so I think like, you know, I, I think it's really easy. I think it's easier when I can bring some like relevant sort of brand examples into the picture, right? Because I yeah, can, think it. that helps helps everyone. So, you know, one of my first clients, uh, which is a great brand um, that I worked with for a couple of years called Unrooted Drink. So they do, they're in the sort of shop space, um, you know, um, they are they're, they're they're doing well in that in that space, um, but they have they have a quite clear difference to, to to Moji, which is Moji again. You know they are they have a you know they they have a thirty day shelf life in terms of their their product. So I think it might be slightly longer, but it's, it's essentially a fr- it's essentially a fresh product, right? So they're they're slightly limit. You know that limits them in terms of su- in terms of some of their sort of distribution, right? Because um, not not all the time, but you know there are certain retailers um, and certain outlets that just require a longer shelf life. It's just it, it, it's just it's just a fact, right? So you know, Unruta, which is very much a challenger, it's a smaller brand than 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 Moji. You know, they picked up pace in in the supermarkets, but they 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 had a very much a sort of focus, which was okay. Let's let's try and play in in spaces, which um, and you know that might be more difficult for another fresher product you know perhaps like moju to sort of come into so you know they they for example focus massively into the travel space so they focus really hard on travel and they've focused on um into hotels and mini bars um so 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 you know in terms of that example is you know that's an example where sort of a brand's looked at look they're they're in a shop space they're in a functional space um um, they've got a competitor within that space, but you know where can where can they not play, and where are those little nuances? And you know, again, shots for travel—they've done really well. They're on Virgin. They're on Virgin. They're on British Airways. Shots is actually a, a real, a perfect place for you know. It's a quick boost of goodness. Um, you know, they're you know, uh, you know, uh, people have digestion issues sometimes on on planes. They have a good gut shot health. You know, there's a story to tell there. Again, same with with the mini bar scenario, you know, people uh, often in, you know, business hotels, for instance, we saw a lot of success focusing on business hotels. We have a good energy shop that sits there. The businessman is coming over um, from, you know, flying in, you know, they're staying in a hotel for one night, you know, they might have an espresso or coffee, but then, you know, they might take an energy shot from, from the fridge. So, and again, you know, in terms of looking at sort of the rate of sale in, in a mini bar. Mini bars is a, is a big opportunity, but um, in terms of volume, if you can go into hotels with hundreds of rooms in, but the rate of sale is often small. This is you know in terms of like per room, so they're looking for a, for a, for a product like that. So again, I think um, you know looking at that example, it's it's 
it's again, that's a little bit of like tapping into well, what are the operational sort of um, issues, the you know, all sort of dynamics within that category. And it's also, also looking, okay, you're sort of also doing a little bit of looking at your competitors and going, where can they play and where can they own and where can we own and sort of making sort of, sort of a plan around that. I think that's answered one half mm. of your question, but yeah. we can dive into probably the second half. Yeah, no, but just, 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 just to kind of, um, uh, kind of play with that is I think one of the things, and I, I do this a lot is, is you can literally write on a piece of paper. It's like, what would this look like if it was easy? So I, and cause it, the world is so complex. People are obsessed with complexity. We, we lean on complexity as a crutch mm -hmm. for making, and we end up just faffing about basically. But what would this look like if it was easy? And I, I asked this, so getting the podcast going, what would this look like if it was easy? And he yeah. just boils away all the, all the bollocks. Yep. And I think when, when, you, when you ask that as a brand, okay, what would this look like if it was easy? And you literally write this on a piece of paper, have your competitors and it's like, what is hard for our competitors? Yeah. So when, when you do these two things, suddenly you find the slipstream channel. Yep. So with, with Unrooted, it's like, okay, what would this look like if it was easy? But we've got a, a, a much longer shelf life, which means we can play in places where there's where they ex, where longer shelf life is actually super advantageous. Yep. Airlines, hotels, fill in the blank. Yeah. What is hard for Moju? Places where they don't have a short, short shelf life. Airlines, uh, hotels, blah, blah, blah. So that's hard for Moju. Grocery is probably pretty easy for Moju because they've been up and running. Sure. Um, so again, what you've done there, super shrewd, is is like oh, fuck it. We're not going to play in the in the grocery space just yet. We're gonna we're gonna dial in on these contract caterers. Yeah. I think that's super valuable and super actionable for people listening to this. But then let's let's go into the as I said, almost like Atlantis, the yeah. underworld yeah. of contract catering. Yeah. So so you you've done you've done this upstream strategy upstream. I can't pronounce yep. my words upstream strategy where you've been like right this is easy for us hard for them mm -hmm. this is where we're going to play mm -hmm. that 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 kind of boils away a lot of the whiff in terms of being being a meandering gallivanting fool yep. um to to focus so you've done that piece of work then what is the next step and maybe we could talk about yeah. Do, do you pick off end sites? Do you yeah. look for the big ones with lots of sites? How do you do it, mate? Yeah. It seems so confusing to me. Yeah. So, so I think, look, look, you know, one of the hardest things like all this is, is, is actually understanding who their customers are. So, you know, getting, getting, understanding who the customers are. So, you know, um, you know, this, this, this goes, so, sorry to interrupt. So, so when, when you went, sorry, wait, sorry yeah. to interrupt. So, right. so when you say customers, yeah. are you, are you talking about, um, say the wholesaler's customer. So would you say, say the wholesaler is, I don't know, I'm just saying yeah. X. Yeah. yeah. When you say customer, are you talking about David Lloyd as the customer or, yeah. or are you talking about the consumer, which is, yeah. is, is the sorry. person in the gym? Cause I always, yeah, get yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So I should have clarified. So, so yeah, in terms of the, the account, so the David Lloyd, uh, you know, the, the account that you're going to be, right. going to be selling to, not the consumer who's going to consume the product. So, yeah. so, so, you know, yeah. of, often these these wholesalers or contract caterers can be quite cagey with with their accounts. So, um, you know, what that really re requires you to do is to try and you know, look, this is a relationship building. And this is a relationship building exercise, which is you know, you have to try and get to know you know in the contract caterers, you know, your lead contact from from Compass, and then underneath your buyer, they will have. Um, they will have business development managers that look after different sectors, and 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 there's 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 a game of being able to sort of try and build relationship with 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 them. Um, you know, they will, um, if they're kind, share lists with you. You know, this startup industry is I do find is sort of um, sort of relatively sort of sharing and caring. So you know, you might be able to sort of get some contacts from any other sort of people that you might know in the industry, and 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 I think. What you've just got to when you're targeting these and when you're targeting these sort of sales accounts, you've 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 got to be, um, yeah. I think you've got to be very very um, very quickly because 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 like I keep keep saying is when you're looking at these out of home categories, you know, it's addressing the pain point, it's addressing the gap. So you know, immediately you've got to try and find your space within that. You've got to you know. You can't just be another of another. You've really got to give them a reason why your product sort of needs to be in 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 that environment. So um, 
I I I think yeah, there, there's quite a you know, and these contract cages are pretty good. You know, um, you know, they often do do um, days where they invite lots of their um, their accounts down. You know, you have larger sampling days. You know, they they can be sort of collaborative, but um, I think it goes with. Like, I think this sort of goes back to the point, which is um, looking at this different this this difference between this out of home and this sort of grocery there. And I think this is where look. Lots of people, you know, go think, oh, we just we emailed one bar, it's the bar of Waitrose, we get the listing, happy days, you know. And there's this huge, this, this out of home piece, there's a lot of hard graft and there's a lot of um, boots on the ground and, and, and there's a lot that goes, goes into it. 